So I asked her again, baby, who are you talking to? She stopped playing, turned to me, laughed and said, I'm playing with the shadow, then pointed at the ceiling. Hey, it's Geneva and welcome to Mystery Digest, where every Sunday I cover true crime cases, paranormal cases, and other mystery-related content. Welcome back to another episode. This week, we're doing another paranormal upload because I think you guys liked it. Some didn't watch it because y'all are scaredy cats. Some stopped halfway through. <laughs> y'all are adults. I expect better. So today I'm doing another paranormal episode, but it won't be like the last one I did. The last one I did, if you haven't watched it yet, I presented five different pieces of visual evidence of the Jamaican Dopey, or supposed evidence that we have locally. This episode, I'll be reading your personal Dopey stories or ghost stories. If you haven't watched that last paranormal episode, I really suggest you watch it, especially if you're not from the Caribbean or Jamaica where you're not quite sure what a duppy is. So let's get to the video. But a quick reminder, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. The first story is titled, The Screaming Man. I've always had a problem with sleep paralysis. I've had episodes of them ever since I was a child. I've done research on what causes them and how to identify them, but sometimes it didn't match up. I could go on about the countless experiences that I'd call abnormal sleep paralysis, because frankly, I'm scared to call them anything else. I'm here to talk about one specific incident that resurfaced years after it happened, the one about the screaming man. I was going through a month-long spell of sleep paralysis episodes. They were so frequent and terrifying that with each one, I became more and more terrified of falling asleep, and the lack of sleep made me more susceptible to having them. It was an endless cycle. I shared a room with my sister at the time. Often she'd be the one to hear me whenever I managed to make strange noises during the sleep paralysis episodes and shake me awake. Over the month-long period, I came across many characters during my abnormal sleep paralysis episodes, from newly dead people or duppies getting trained to become, for lack of a better term, sleep paralysis demons, and to my luck with me as their target practice. To hooded grim reaper figures carrying me into a dark haunted forest and explaining to me why my soul was actually older than I thought. But one definitely stuck out among the crowd. Mm. I was laying in bed next to my sister trying not to fall asleep. But of course I drifted off. It's not like I didn't know what was coming. I could feel a change in the environment before bed. I could also hear a faint ring in my ear, the precursor to future horrors. It felt like I was barely asleep for five minutes when I was jolted awake by a dominating presence of pure rage and a piercing ringing in my ears that felt like it had enough force to destroy my eardrums. That sensation was always my least favorite. I could feel the sensation in the room before I opened my eyes, and I didn't even plan to open my eyes to be honest. I always tried to keep my eyes closed. I thought maybe if I kept them closed, they would think that I'm sleeping and leave me alone. But for some reason, I opened them. There was a mirror attached to the dresser in front of my bed, and at the angle I was at, I could peek through and see him standing at the side of the bed next to me, staring at me as if daring me to pretend he was there. Oh, he bold bold, okay. He was pure darkness, like a shadow came to life. His entire being was a shade of black that felt like it could swallow you whole. If I had the option of running out of the room, I don't think I could have. Because if my body wasn't already in a state of sleep paralysis, I would have been paralyzed by fear. I don't remember how this escalated, but I do remember the absolutely terrible screeching wails he let out and I do remember it clashing with the already intense ringing noises. He was yelling at me with pure rage, but I couldn't make out what he was saying. He was right in my face and I could hear his screeching loud and clear, but no intelligible words. But I knew he was angry about something. He was tall, 
That's the first observation I made about his appearance. Tall and slender. I couldn't see much with facial features, as shadow people like him don't really have them. He was wearing a suit, and if my memory serves me right, a top hat to finish it off. Funeral wear. If not for the yelling, it definitely drove the message home when he started hitting me. I felt everything, every single blow, and I could feel what he was feeling, rage. Unlike his screams against the ringing, so was his rage against my fear, and so was his fist against my face. I don't remember when it ended or when I woke up, but I do remember crying and my sister being confused. I called my father in and he consoled me. The next morning, I kid you not, my sister said she saw someone standing next to me during the night. She saw him looking down at me and out of fear, pretended she didn't so he could leave her alone and she went back to bed. Honestly sis, <laughs> me too. See people business and leave it alone. <laughs> Honestly, and years later, just last month, I was talking with my father and other siblings. We were talking about my stepmother at the time of the whole one month long fiasco. We were at her house and the conversation moved to how she got possession of the land. Turns out, she pretty much cheated herself into it near the end of the original owner's life. The guy didn't even get a proper burial. It was rumored that he was buried by the government because no one claimed his body. And you know how Jamaican culture is when it comes to being respectful to the dead. So I asked my father to describe him and he answered. He was really tall, very slender. At this point, I would have just stopped living. <laughs> there is no reason if I can't sleep. <laughs> What is my peace? Am I not allowed any? No sleep? No. Okay. So the next story is titled The Up or Mommy, I'm talking to the up. I was coming over from my neighbor's house to change my clothes one afternoon. And when I went into my room, I noticed a strange feeling presence. I already knew what it was. Too tired to really pay it any mind, I did what I was doing the entire time still feeling it. Then I went back over. A bit later, I came back again, this time with my daughter. Opened my room door and the feeling was still there. Still too tired to really do anything and honestly, I didn't really feel scared. I just ignored it. I started combing my hair and watching something on my phone while on the bed and my daughter was on the other side playing. Not first I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary but after a moment I realized something. Now it's pretty much been me and my daughter for most of her three years of life. I know how she sounds when she's playing by herself versus when she's playing with a playmate and she definitely wasn't playing by herself. So I listened closer. She was asking questions. She waited for answers. She was answering questions. Now a bit alarmed, I turned to her and asked her, baby, who are you talking to? She laughed and she said, I'm talking to the up. Then she looked towards the ceiling. What? I asked, trying to be sure of what I heard. She replied innocently, I'm talking to the up, mommy. Normalized through no way children. So I asked her if she was okay and she reassured me that she was. So I turned back towards where I was to finish my hair, still listening to her. Soon she turned on her side facing me and was still playing. So I asked her who she was playing with and she said, I'm playing with the up mommy. It's so fun. Family fun. <laughs> we come to you. Then she continued playing. I asked her again if she was okay and she reassured me that she was. 
And I was starting to get worked up, but I didn't want my daughter to know. I didn't want her to feel like she should be scared. But a few minutes later, when the playing started getting louder and a bit more rough, that was my final straw. This thing was getting a bit too comfortable, a bit too prime for my liking. So I asked her again, baby, who are you talking to? She stopped playing, turned to me, laughed and said, I'm playing with the shadow, then pointed at the ceiling. Now mind you, her shadow was behind her, so there's no way she could be pointing at her own shadow at the ceiling. And there was no shadow in the ceiling. So I cussed it the hell out. So I'll, I'll just be saying this part word for word. Watch out, me and you not turning at tonight, you know. Because you dead, I'm me alive. You not play with my pitney. Come out of here. And with the next couple of minutes, the baby fell asleep. Good on you, sis. I would have left that child. <laughs> I do not think I have the energy for a haunting involving a child. I would just stop. I would just leave. <laughs> I mean, she seems to be having fun, by all means. You just got yourself a babysitter. <laughs> I mean, she seems fine. She looks like she can handle herself. Just. Just leave her be. Just pack your bag, sis. Leave. <laughs> Protect your peace. So this next story is titled, One Stop Driver. When I was attending Exchange All Age back in the early 1980s, there was really only one bus that drove through my community. So that's the bus I took to and from school. After school one day, while we were passing the place where a bar is, next to where the prep school Cohen's is now, a lady in the back of the bus shouted, One stop driver! The driver, already a bit past where the passenger wanted to stop, reversed to the spot and me and the rest of the passengers who were in the way got out so she could come out. But no one did. We were all awkwardly waiting for whoever to come out, but she wasn't there, and everyone heard her. See? Even as a ghost, she has her priorities straight. Stop at the closest bar. This next story is called The Duppy on the Gate. In 1984, one of my aunt's husband died, and while we were coming from his night night, with some of my cousins and my other aunt, I saw a duppy for the first time. My cousins were walking further ahead. My aunt was drifting behind, and I was in the middle. And the roads were very dark back then. It wasn't as lit as it is now. But while I was walking by a house on the side of the road, I saw somebody with a kimbo leaning against the gate of the house. I didn't even realize what it was until a strong feeling came over me. I don't know if it was fear or what, but it was an ugly feeling, and my head felt like it was growing. Then I realized the man had no feet. How are you going to walk without feet? Then I recognized the face. It was my aunt's dead husband, the one that the night night was for. So I turned back and ran to my aunt and hid under her skirt. When we passed back, he wasn't there. It was a nice collection, wasn't it? Oh my god. The ghosties be wilding. Now I will be doing a part two to this video because I do have other stories. But please, 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 if you have stories that you would like to share, send them to me on WhatsApp. If you have my number through Instagram at mystery underscore digest or by email, mysterydigest at gmail.com. What do you guys think of the stories? Do you think they're spicy enough? The experiences of the people who watch these videos, do you have any experiences like that? Please remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please give it a like, to share the video with someone who might enjoy it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, comment down below because I love reading them. 
and as usual don't shoot what did i say about last time don't haunt people especially people's kids i know you can i know like if you die and you become a ghost i know that it might be tempting it might be lonely you can't talk to you to adults but don't talk to kids that's weird <laughs>